You're listening to the Masterclass with So Max. So Max. Every Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. only on Massive Metro. There was no better way to welcome you into the show. Uh, Pandora Mabai is joining us today. I mean, township born like millions of other people. I mean, she had to search for her purpose, meaning what would uh, make her different. I mean, out of millions of people all around South Africa and the world at large. Being private schooled, at Progress College in Cape Town, she was offered an opportunity to expand her horizons and come closer to defining uh, this purpose. The irony was that she failed her debating classes dismally, not knowing that within that particular area, that's where her purpose would actually, actually be born. I mean, she came into speaking. That is why she is here today. And she was invited to speak by Machachi Motapo uh, at a seminar for women professional. She she recognized the similarities between the dysfunctional relationship Pandora had here with her partner and struggles with many other women. It was in this event in 2010 that Pandora, the speaker, the advocate of change, was born. And I can tell you that today she is right here in studio and we're going to be talking about her. Her values, she believes in integrity substance truth and belief and we'll be hearing more about that and then most importantly we're going to be talking about her testimony as well as her, her ideology that came around the issues of love pandora mabai welcome to master class Yes, Max. <gasps> I <am> what <laughs> Feels good to be here. I love your energy. I just ah. love it. I'm happy. I'm happy. I, I love your, your energy. <laughs> I, I wanted to say to you, Molo Sisi. Molo Puti. Siya teta ka lukun jetina. Siya teta. Masi teta ke. Masi teta puti nga ndigo mkosa. Masi teta. Nga ndigo mkosa ndigo ngele ni waka matongo. Hmm. Aike mna kendi limbondo misu cholo uto sinu. Kenge ba ito alo mtuwa kaza. Eza lwa intombi ya kwa sikosa no. Oh, no, oh, amazing stuff. This is the master class. Every week we ho we're hosting amazing people like yourself. But for people, I did not, I mean, finish even half of what is contained in that particular profile. Yes. For people who are listening to us right now, how do you describe yourself at this stage of your life? Who is Pandora Mabai? Pandora Mabai, she is the advocate of change because um, being an advocate of change as a speaker, it means that I'm being something different to the norms of society. I am breaking society expectations and what is expected of people and how people are defined by others who they are meant to be when each and every individual is born with a purpose. So I stand for change because you have to discover who you are in order for you to understand that you are an individual individual with a certain race to run on this earth as a unique masterpiece who are you and i am here to help you to discover who you are hence i'm the advocate of change be part of the show ladies and gentlemen i can already feel my goosebumps you know <laughs> just the intro just with that intro i can already feel her goosebumps it just gone 16 after top of the hour we interactive on our social media platforms at massive metro at Semex sa so send us the conversation I mean, your comment or anything if you are following our conversation now. As a, as a speaker myself, Pandora, uh, one of the m m frequently asked questions, and I'm sure you came across that, it's about who am I? It's about how do I discover my purpose? And I like how you discovered, how discovered yours. Yes. Because you discovered it uh, ironically. You know, <laughs> where... In a debate class, you failed dismally, but only to find that within that specific area, that's where your purpose was born. Yes. How did it come about? Because one would have said, I suck at this, you know, I'm bad at this, so I give up. Many people say, I, can, I can't speak in and all that, but that's where your purpose was born. You see, for me, I, f I failed dismally. I ended up leaving the debating class because I thought that was not me. Little did I know, you know, you, we always have to look at the names that we are given. My name is Pandora. Pandora carries a box. Pandora means full of surprises. So, delay is not denial. I was delayed thinking I am not a good debating student and I had to leave debating class because I failed dismally. Little did I know that 
that was the birthing, that was the seed that was in me that others could not see. It is all about the world measuring us because at that moment, I had teachers who were telling me whether I'm good or not and being defined by others, I believed that I was bad at debating up until I became a runaway bride from a multimillionaire that made me think, if I am going through this as a woman and I am not willing to to let go of who i'm born to be just for the title of being mrs somebody or having all these material things that i was having and for me i knew that i am the voice for the women that are dying in silent i am a voice for the african child who says life is meant to be this way and that is how pandora the speaker was born out of my mess of being humiliated by tabloids because I'm a runaway bride from a multimillionaire. I made a message which birth Pandora the speaker that today is encouraging the entire world. Your story or your message comes from your experience. Yes. And that's where your purpose was born. Yes. And today we're going to talk about one of your favorite subjects. Don't be owned by love. But many people, we talk about what is love. But you have a different and a beautiful angle to say, it's not love. Yes. What are the things that say this is not love? But I want us to start with your story. Who were you married to? What was your relationship like? What was happening in that relationship? Because, and I like, you know why I like your story? The society programs young girls who grow up so that you can be married by a real successful person so these girls they forget who they are they don't even care who they are because being married to a particular man is seen as a symbol of achievement mm. but you found yourself in that space and mm. how did it pan out um we in a society right now where women it's not just young girls when i speak i speak to from young to married women yeah. married women in general i encourage to have a good man and the definition of a yeah. good man is measured by how much he has can he take care of you which those things are important but they are not the foundation of a marriage and men are put under pressure to be rich in order for them to attract the beautiful woman mm -hmm. with what they have yeah um coming from a very I, i'm coming from a very very religious background mm -hmm. because you see this thing about god it's not religion it's a relationship mm -hmm. i was raised in a, a religious background and the only way for me to come to the golden city was after i graduated which I had to do what was expected of me because I knew there was so much for me in the city. Yep. Coming to the city, the lights of the city were brighter than where I was coming from. I could see a Bentley being driven by a black man on the streets of, of Johannesburg. Whereas in Cape Town, in order for me to see that, I go to Camps Bay yeah. and it's driven by a white man. So it was, it was the other side of the coin. And if you're a child that is raised in a different way, it can excite you because you're coming with these big dreams and you are seeing people of your skin color achieving what you want. And... In, in, in my journey, I became an events coordinator and doing events, a glitz and the glam, I, I, I fell in love and falling in love was with a government official. Mm -hmm. And because when you're in that space of events, there's so much that comes your way. It's celebrities, it's government officials, yeah. because you're a host. And women are born to fall in love. But when I fell in love, there was a sign. I was like, but he looks older than me, you know. That was sign number one for me. But because of the associations and the relationships that I had, my friends were like, but do you know who he is? Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, this is Mr. Who ever he's got this and that and i'm not blaming my friends i had to go through that yeah. for this to be birthed so for me personally i was in this relationship it looked good i could la live in a big mansion house i could have a driver that was driving me around i could travel the world but you see when you're born with a significant gift inside of you you should never never allow there is no one not even your mother can define who you're born to be when you're born with something inside of you there was, there was a voice inside of me that was saying but is this all to it mm. 
the inner voice was saying i've got yeah. the house i've got the, the the black card with so many millions mm, i've mm. got i've got i've got the cars that i'm being driven around yeah. and then the true self that speaks to one spoke to me and said is this it and we must understand that for some men not all men we become objects you mm. are you are one of the collective beautiful things that is collecting but if you are born with the purpose you have a choice to set yourself free from that bondage or you live succumbing to losing purpose and you sacrifice who you're born to be so when i looked at myself and i was like so this is it there's got to be more to life and when i looked at who pandora is i was losing who i am mm -hmm. because I, i i've got a voice how and when did you realize that you are losing who you are when you are being told what to do and what not to do because we need to understand that marriage it's it it will never complete you it complements you it's two people coming together to bring out the best in each other so when someone is coming with an idea or a career goal you cannot say it can be done you should be the one person who's standing with that person and encouraging that person but a lot of people are losing their vision they're losing who they are because they are so about material things that you you've defined who you are based on what you have on the table but that's not what you have when the Porsches are parked who are you when the lights are mm. off who are you outside that mansion who are you and those are the questions that i used to ask myself yeah. if all of this goes away tomorrow who will i be mm. and i knew that there was a bigger purpose so being told you can do this you can't do that no no this you can do yes i i was like something is not right here something is not right and with that i knew that i had a decision to make because we were no longer complimenting each other there was a control that was being ran because the other one has more money than the other and a lot of people are losing themselves prior to what do i have on the table people are selling their souls for material things and i chose to walk away from that and that's when you realized it's not love i realized that love builds love does not destroy who you really are inside we're going to be talking more about love on the other side of the break what a beautiful beautiful story this is master class and i am samex welcome to the show after the break we continue with pandora Dantuli, aspire to inspire before you expire. You are listening to the masterclass only on Massive Metro with the great Semex. Hey, 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 Hector Motivator here of the Hector Experience. You are listening to Semex on the masterclass only on Massive Metro. Hi, I'm Dr. Matole Mutsecha. We are listening to Master Class with uh, Max on Massive Metro. Massive Metro. Turn it up. Tap. I pack in the living, I pack in the Just turn it up This one brings it back. It just gone 29 after top of the hour. This is Master Class, the leadership code. I'm joined by Pandora Mabai uh, on the show today. I mean, we're learning from her today. So we're getting right into it today. From your experience, you saying don't be owned by love. Yeah. But how do we know if this is love or if, it's, if this is not love? Um, you see, I love the fact that we're in the love month and we're yeah. talking love yes. in the love month. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying don't be owned by love. Um, we all want love and we all want to be loved. Uh, and the thing is, many people are owned by the idea of love, mm. whereas they're actually not even living in love. Yep. And with that being said, the reality, it is shared that partners they are there and they are hurting you more than they are loving you so i've got valentine's day falls on the 14th of february so i've got 14 reasons for yeah. my sisters and my brothers mm. why i'm saying it's not love yeah 
can't wait. I can't wait for that. I've got, I've got 14. Yeah. So I don't know if you want me to start uh, with the let's ladies. Let's start with the ladies. Yeah. Why it's not love to the sisters? It needs to make sense why we're saying it's not love. Sisters, it's not love when he scares you. Mm. That's point number one. Number yeah. two, it's not love when it's all about sex. Okay. When he scares you, what do you mean? You see someone that you love, you should never be afraid of them. Okay. I get it. You should never be yeah, afraid. Yeah. The minute you're afraid of someone, yeah. then there is it's not love. It's, it's, it's not love. Mm. Because love is beautiful. Love love is, is, is a relationship yeah. of two people coming together. Mm. But every time you are afraid of this person, or what are they gonna say when I come up with this idea, you know, they might say no that will never work you know crushing your 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 ideas and just demolishing got you it. as a person got it you yeah. should never be afraid yeah. of love okay love is not afraid yeah love is not afraid mm -hmm. love is not afraid uh -huh. yeah so that's what i mean and number two i said that when he is all about sex mm -hmm. that is not love yeah. there are people that will allow you to touch each and every part of their body, but they will never let you touch their heart or their soul. True. That is not love. Got it. That is not love, Powerful. my sister. That is not love. Point number three. It's not love when he complains that your womanhood is too big and doesn't satisfy him. Mm -hmm. A man that loves you embraces you yeah. just as you, as you are. It's not about how big you are, about how small you are. Mm. It's about the connection because it's two people coming together to be one. Love embraces. Love loves you just the way you are. Love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. So if it's got conditions that you are too big it means that he's it's gonna look love. elsewhere for what he thinks might be that is not love number four <laughs> number four he compares you to his ex or to your friends there is no comparison apples and bananas are two different things as human beings we are born differently hence our fingerprints mm -hmm. are completely different we are all unique we are all different. We are all born into each and every person that comes into your life. They are there to play a certain purpose. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect, for an example, Amanda to be Asanda. Yeah. When he compares you to Asanda, he's not over Asanda and he still loves his Asanda. And we need to allow people to go and find themselves because you are sitting with a man that does not love you if it compares you to your friends mm -hmm. that is not love love protects if he's comparing you to others is he really protecting you because as women we are emotional beings so when you are being compared he is actually demolishing your self-esteem as a human being okay so that is not love mm -hmm. point number five he keeps your relationship a secret from his friend or family. That's number six, ne? That's number five. Okay. That's number five. We are with the sisters. Yes. Sisters, oh, it's yes. not love. It's not love. So if he keeps your relationship a secret from his friends mm -hmm. or his family, that is not love. Love unites people. Love brings people together. Mm -hmm. So if you are hidden, what does that say to you? Because the, 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 the reason we get into a relationship is for us to grow and to build with one another and get married. Mm -hmm. So if we are not growing and I am being hidden, then that is not love. Mm. Why are you hiding something that you love? Okay, fair enough. Why would you hide something that you love? Number six. He always has an excuse for not responding to your texts or answering your calls. Love is communication. Without mm. communication, yeah. that is not love. It's not love. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are looking at, you find that people are fighting. He, I see, he has read 
Pandora, he has read my WhatsApp. Mm. The blue ticks are there. He's online, but he's not responding to me. He's busy talking to the entire world. But you are the less important person to him. He doesn't want to talk to you. People who want to talk to you and want to communicate with you, they love you. So if he's not answering your calls and is not responding to your text messages, that is not love. <laughs> Number seven. <laughs> Number seven. He always goes out with his friends, but he never takes you out. A man that has time because we are so busy. We are all busy. People are running their careers. People are running so many things. If you make time to take your friends out as guys, why will you not make time to take out the love of your life? So if he does not take you out and he takes his friends out, that is not love, says the advocate of change. Mm. The advocate. <laughs> I'm hearing you. And number eight. Number eight. He isolates you and disconnects you from your friends or family. Men, some men, not all of them, men, mm. some men have the power of disconnecting you because of their own insecurities. Mm. Love is secure. Love is never insecure. So if it's disconnecting you and it's isolating you and it wants you to itself, that means you are all mine and we are not embracing others. So love, as I've said before, it unites and it brings people together. That's the fundamental mm. of love. That's what love is meant to be. It brings two families and makes them one big happy family. So if it's taking you away, you should ask yourself, does this man really love me? And the advocate of change says, that is not love. Number nine. Number nine. He prevents you from pursuing your career ambitions and goals by destroying your self-esteem mm. that when someone destroys your self-esteem you feel not worthy you even afraid to speak to other people about your ambitions and your career goals because you've already been broken by the one that is meant to love you mm. love is there to build we build together even in our careers we are here to build but when it actually destroys yeah. your self-esteem it's not love he doesn't love you because when someone destroys your self-esteem he's breaking you into pieces you become a nobody and that's the power that they take from you and that's the power that you give away as a woman which it's a power that you can take back I took it back. If I could do it, so can you. That is not love. Number 10. Number 10. He disrespects and disregards or humiliates you in front of other people. Love does not humiliate. Mm. Love is kind. Love is patient. But when it disrespects you in front of other people, it means I don't love you. And guess what? The other people that are with you, they are there to see that you are actually not in love. Because when it's love, there's a way of communicating things. There's a time for everything. You need to understand that we are with people. But when you humiliate your loved one, it actually says a lot about you as a man more than the woman that you are humiliating. So if it disrespects you, if it disregards you, and humiliates you in front of other people, that is not love. 11? 11. He physically and emotionally abuses you. I'm against woman abuse. Whether it's physical, whether it's emotional. When it starts, walk away. Whether it's emotional, because other people say, but he will change. But if he starts, because when you are emotionally abused, you, are bro you become a broken woman. And you will carry that brokenness even in the right man that you will find in the future. So when you see that it is abuse, let it be emotional, let it be physical, walk away. Because when it starts, it will never stop. Twelve. Number twelve. He cheats on you. Love should never hurt. When someone cheats on you, you ask yourself, what is wrong with me? You start comparing yourself to other women. 
that where did I go wrong? What does she have that I don't have? That's where low self-esteem comes in. And when he cheats on you, it is not love. Someone that loves you will honor you and respect you by not cheating on you. 13. Number 13. He abuses alcohol or drugs and refuses to get help. We are there to build. So if you see that your partner has got a problem and you approach it and he is refusing, he doesn't love you. Because someone that loves you will want to build with you and he will see that you have his best interest at heart. So if he does not love himself first to be able to get out of that, then guess what? He does not love you because he does not love himself first. And the last reason for sisters why it's not love. He picks a fight with you every single day. Love is peace. Love has disagreements and agreements. But when it's a fight every day, it's not love. You c love is not war. Let's make love and let's not make war. 14 reasons as according to the advocate of change to the sisters why it's not love brothers we are coming download our massive metro app on google play store or apple i store i store you're listening to master class and this is massive metro my name is sam x the real number 10 and we're joined by an advocate of change Pandora is her name and she's sharing with us reasons, 14 reasons why it's not love for both sisters and for the brothers. One of the reasons you say it's not love for the sisters is when she disconnects you from pursuing your purpose and your career. Yes. Many times, particularly from religion, or the religious institutions a woman is seen as the helper to the man yes so and that is interpreted as when we get married as a woman you pursue the direction where the man leads you where do we draw a balance between as a woman supporting your man as opposed to that man saying I don't have respect for what you are doing. Where do we draw the balance? Um, a woman is born to be a helper in a man's vision. And you must remember that women are multitasked. Mm -hmm. women, women can do so much yep. at the same time. So as a man as well, it's your duty to identify your woman's vision for her life and mm. her purpose. Because now you are two people coming together as one. Yeah. So in order for you to lead with integrity, you need to be able to allow her to lead you and you need to be able to lead her mm. so that she does not forget who she is. As much as she's helping you, awaken who she is as well. Yeah. Because you know what's happening? She runs with you as a helper and she's not going to fail in bringing your vision to life. Yeah. She will do it. She will do it. But in most cases and most of the divorces that we have today, it's because he's made and I was left behind. Mm. So it is a man's duty to walk with her and also identify who is she. Yes, she's here to build my home. Yes, she's here to help me in my vision. Which that will go without saying it has to happen. A woman is there to help you as a man. In five minutes, 14 reasons why brothers should know this is not love. Number one, she crushes your ego. Mm -hmm. When you've crushed a man's ego, you've killed the man. Mm -hmm. You've killed him. You've killed him for the future wife. You've, you've killed the man. Number two. It's not love, my brother, when she is all about money. Mm -hmm. It's not love. Money is good. Money is a way of us living. But money should not be 
the only reason that she is with you. Love is able to generate money when the relationship is built on love. Powerful, yeah. Number three, she complains that your manhood is too small and doesn't satisfy her. It goes back to love embraces and love loves unconditionally. When there are conditions, you should know, my brother, that is not love. Point number four. Brothers, it's not love when she has an excuse for not responding to your text messages and not answering your calls. And I go back and I say it again, communication is for both sides. A relationship without communication and not responses to messages and phone calls, that is not love, my brother. Brother, it's not love. Number five, she compares you to her ex your friends or her father mm. her father was there to give birth to her her father served his purpose in her mother's life you are not her father you are her lover she can never compare you to her father she can't compare you to her ex or her friends brothers it's not love when number six she keeps your relationship a secret from her friends or family love can never be hidden love is beautiful you don't hide it but when you are hidden it is not love brothers it's not love when she flirts with other wealthier guys in your presence mm. she has killed you as a man she's saying that this is what i deserve and you do not have it when a woman does that to a man you've killed the brother and He's broken for all the women that will come to his life until that is rectified. Mm. Number eight, brothers, it's not love when she wants you to pay her bills but doesn't comp tr contribute in any way in your life goals. Contribution is emotionally. Mm. It's spiritually. It's physically. You are there. You are guiding the brother. But if she does not contribute in any way, but she wants you to pay the bills, where are you getting the money if she's not even supporting this vision? So if it's all about her bills being paid and not contributing towards your goals, that is not love, my brother. Brothers, it's not love when, number nine, she criticizes, mocks and discourages discourages your ambition goals and career love embraces love encourages love says do or die together my ride and die when she is not encouraging you and she's actually discouraging you in your ambitions in your goals and your career that is not love brothers number 10 it's not love when she insults you, undermines, or disrespects you in the presence of others. Love is kind. Love is patient. Everything has a time for it to be done. Even if you are angry at that moment, but if there are other people that will look down on your man, then it's not love if you're going to do it in front of other people. Brothers, it's not love. Number 11, she's always giving you ultimatums and threatens to leave you if you don't comply. Love is patient. I say that again. We wait for us to get there. So if she's threatening you and she's saying she's going to leave you, let her leave mm. because that is not love. Number 12, she stops you from supporting your family or your children. Love builds. When it's not building and it's separating, it's not love. Number 13, my brothers, it's not love when she terrorizes your baby mamas and bullies your children. Love is unity, but when it's there to divide, then it is not love. And the last one, number 14, she picks a fight with you every day. Love is kind, but when it's fights, it is not love. 
Do you have an interview coming up? And do you need some help preparing for it? RADA Training Academy, together with Massive Metro, is running a one-day interview course. We will teach you how to create your CV, how to prepare for your interview, interview questions, interview rules, and how to avoid common mistakes. Ensure that you master the interview process with confidence. This course would normally cost you 1,000 rands, but you can get it now for 350 rands by following these two easy steps. Like and share the RADA Training Academy and Massive Metro pages on Facebook. What's up your full name and ID number to 073-920-4883. Terms and conditions apply. It just gone five before top of the hour. This is Master Class, the leadership coach with Pandora Mabai. Where do we draw a balance between men being a provider and when he's been used in a relationship? When you are used in a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> when it's all about money and when you just about paying bills, where do we draw? You work line? together. Yeah. You work together to build, you understand. And mm. as a brother, you should not allow that. Do not allow yourself to be used just for the sake of having a woman in your life. Because people are so into this idea of love you are able to say no without feeling guilty and if she can't take a no when you do not have then that woman is using you it's no longer about love what is the role of society in either accelerating such behaviors that contradicts the nature of love is there a way in which our orientation our socialization actually accelerates such behaviors as a society we need to go back to understanding the structure of a family number one mm -hmm. what is a family and why do we have a family not the, what social media is portraying because people are building lives based on what they see on social platforms so we need to go back to say but what was the purpose of a family from the beginning why do we have families mm. and when society gets to that level of understanding and us pushing the agenda of building loving families that our children will be able to learn from us then we're going somewhere as a society what's your view on the influence of religion in families or in relationships or in the model that religion portrays about the relationship are you happy is that the model that uh, we should adopt the religion of the 21st century is so diluted i have to be very honest this is my opinion it is actually dividing than building example example is um if he has not seen you in the church, some churches do that. If he's not a brother from the church, you are not equally yoked. You can't get married if he's not from this church. But what if God decides to give you someone who's broken that God wants to mend through you being a believer? Women today, they say they don't want to work. They don't want to fix people. They're not in the business of fixing broken men. That's they the narrative today. But that's not being a woman. We as women were born to nurture, to love, and to teach. How religion portrays the role of a woman? Are you happy? Uh, I feel that in religion, the women uh, are put in a space where the man is above the woman. Are you happy? I am not happy. I am not happy. I am not happy with that. <laughs> Please comment on the role of education. Now, you know, how we're grooming men and women, the influence of the education that we're getting. Is it creating the society or the idealism of the relationship that we want? It's when people do not have values and morals and principles to start with before they get the education, knowing who they are, that will get into their heads. Because a woman can be a CEO. You understand, go far and get your PhD and your MBAs and do it all, you know. But at the end of the day, when it comes to your husband, you are still a wife. You are not a CEO inside the house. So what am I saying? I'm saying that education should not take over who we are as women and as our role as a mother and a wife to a husband. 
it should never change us who we are femininity is so beautiful let's just embrace it mm. you should come back to the show <laughs> I would love to come back. I would love. Okay, I'm coming back to the show because I want us to talk about the feminine feminism. Yes, we should never the lose. role, the development, the model. Yes, I would. I, I would love to tackle that topic. How do people get in touch with you? I am available on social media platforms at uh, Twitter. It's at P Mabai, Instagram Pandora Mabai. I do have a Facebook page called Pandora Mabai Inspirational Speaker or my YouTube channel Pandora Mabai. If you want to email me, it's Pandora Mabai at gmail.com. For any bookings that you want to do telephonically or you want to get in con- connection with me, it's 076 272 So basically, you are bookable. Yes, I am bookable. <laughs> I am a motivational speaker. Pandora Mabai, thank you very much for coming into the show. And I'm looking forward actually to have this conversation continued. Yes, it will be continued. Definitely, you have my word. Done. You're listening to the Masterclass with Sir Max. Sir Max. Every Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. only on Massive Metro.